I got a call and dad said, you know, can I talk to you, you know, private space? And I said, you know, what's going on? And he says, you know, I want you to be the first to know they've diagnosed me with multiple myeloma cancer. The doctors had given him probably six months to live. He ended up living almost six years, which was miraculous. And for, I would say, four and a half to five years showed really no signs of the cancer. Probably maximized those years um, more than we would have. My dad to me, obviously, is uh, was a hero to me, and it really had very little to do with his preaching and with what he did publicly or, or in the pulpit. It was um, the life that he lived, the dad that he was, the husband that he was to my mom, my hero in, in every sense of the word. By the end, he, he definitely, um, his body was becoming emaciated. It, it became painful and difficult to see your hero um, lose enormous amounts of weight and his height and his strength and energy. So it was, um, it was painful. I remember after Dad died, you know, I was the one doing the speaking in our community, and I remember I was doing my best to articulate this story of God's love, but I myself um, was no longer benefiting from it in terms of allowing that great story and the love of God to heal me. I had never faced uh, death like this before, and um, I think I was closing in on myself a little bit. Chelsea would ask me how you're doing, my wife of 17 years, and I would say good. Um, and I started to kind of not even go there. And I think I thought that was um, the path back to normality, the path back to being healthy. I didn't realize that I, I wasn't an okay, and I don't think I was processing it like I thought it was. About three months after Dad had passed, I kind of had a... Um, a pretty significant moment. Both my wife and I, we were sitting with uh, key leaders in our community, and they said, how you doing? I don't know if I had really considered that. Um, I think I was just doing my best to lead the community that my dad had left behind and try, try to be strong for my mom, and, and I realized that I was, I was not okay. It was a moment with key leaders in our community who said, you, you, you're gonna stop. Like, you're not gonna preach right now. You're not gonna lead right now. You're gonna heal right now. That, pr that moment probably changed the trajectory of my life. And I have to say, sitting here, community and friends and relationships have never been more imperative, important, and absolutely essential and necessary in, in the human experience. I would not be here talking about my dad with any sense of sanity if it wasn't for friends. I felt like no one knows what it's like to lose their hero, their dad. You know, he was my pastor, my friend, my you know, everything. And because I had such meaningful, intentional, awesome friends who challenged me, I realized, you know, actually I'm not the only one. And this is, um, this is not forever. I'm gonna, I'm gonna see my dad again, and I believe that according to faith. And uh, I needed friends to remind me that.